بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه ما بعد This is our sixth and final lesson going through the series The Salaf and the Prayer And in this uh, final episode, final lesson We wanted to go through the categories of the people when it comes to the Salah We mentioned it briefly in the previous lesson that there are five categories The people generally fall into when it comes to the Salah The first category of people are those who wrong themselves by falling and performing shortcomings in their prayer such as having an imperfect wudu delaying their prayer until the salah exits or is about to exit not giving any importance to perfecting the inward actions of their prayer so that they, when they pray their mind is somewhere else and they don't give a care about that all they care about is what just get this fall off my back just get this salah what off my back, no matter how I perform it, it doesn't matter. As long as I can say I pray the Asr, I pray Dhuhr. And this is uh, a state that many of us go through. طيب. That you just pray to pray. You just pray to get it off your back. And you find that uh, I just want to pray method and to just get my parents off my back who are nagging at me to pray. But I don't give a care to the wudu, I don't give a care to the salah. I don't give a care to the arkan of the salah, the shurut of the salah, the wajibat of the salah. I don't care. I don't bother to study fiqh salah, the rulings pertaining to the salah. And so I just pray. There's no tuma'nina, there's no nothing. This is the worst level. This is the worst category. And it's this category who will be what? Who will be questioned on the day of judgment. And as we know, the first point that the person will be questioned about is what? It's going to be about his salah. فَإِنْ صَلُحَتْ And if the salah is perfect and you pass that, then everything else will fall into place for you. But if that salah is not perfect, then you're going to be in for a rough time. And so it's important that the person does not find himself in this category. And if he does find himself in this category, that he tries to rectify his situation before it's too late. The second category are those who, they pray on time. So when the salah comes in, they pray. Um, they perform good wudu, an excellent wudu. They know the arkan of the wudu, the sunan of the wudu, the wajibat, or the sunan of the wudu, the arkan of the wudu. طيب. They um, they know the arkan of the salah. They preserve it. They act upon it. They perform it. Everything is done the way it should be done in terms of the pillars, observing the pillars and observing the wajibat. However, a problem that they suffer from is that their heart, what? It can deviate away whilst they're in their prayer. And so they can have, what? Stray thoughts. And so instead of focusing on the prayer itself and coming with what what's expected from the mu'min, which is a khushu' they don't come with that. And so everything is correct on the outward side. But there's a problem where? On the inward. There's a problem with the khushu'. There's deficiency in the khushu'. They quickly lose concentration. And when they lose the concentration, it's very difficult for them to get it to get it back or the difference between the second and the third level is that they don't fight with their soul so when the heart goes it just goes everything else is being done perfectly the prior, the, the outward part of the prayer so the arkan are being fulfilled the wajibat are being fulfilled but as soon as the heart goes and he's thinking about something else it just continues what dozing off there's no fighting you're not forcing the soul you're not forcing the heart to come back and to remain focused on the acts of worship that you are performing and so this second level is, is better off than the first level, but it's still deficient. Because as we said, the highest level of, uh, that we aspire to, which is the level of the Salaf of Salah, is that they perfected both their outward actions when it came to their prayer, and they perfected their inward actions when it came to their prayer as well. As for the third category of people, when it comes to the Salah, then they are those who again strive hard to protect their pillars, to preserve the pillars of the prayer, um, they preserve the obligations of the prayer. They perform the sunan of the prayer. They also um, come with an excellent wudu. They come with the shurut, the arkan, the wajibat, and the sunan, as I mentioned. However, they differ with the second category in that whenever they start to lose concentration, they fight their soul to get it back. So they're fighting. They're in a constant state of what? Fighting with their soul and their heart to try and keep it focused upon their prayer. And so they're struggling in that regard. But they're not like the second category. The second category, as soon as the heart goes, it goes. 
طيب. as soon as the soul diverts or deviates it deviates it's gone خلاص. I'm still performing the outward actions but my inward state is what? is in another state I'm not in the prayer I'm not involved in the prayer as for this person he's trying to get his soul he's suffering from that problem and he's trying to get his soul drag his soul drag his heart into focus onto the prayer to keep his focus onto the salah he's trying to uh, block out everything else block out shaitan block out the person who's giving him waswas block out his own heart and soul from deviating away from the from the salah and this is the hal of the mu'min this is the state of the believer the believer is like that when Allah and he died in we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us at least from those people uh, because those people are what uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran they're the medium level they're the middle level and of course we ask Allah for the highest level always but for many of us many many of us we are still languishing in the first and second level we're still languishing in the first and second level and I said the third level يعني, if somebody has a third level then now he's come with a lot of a lot of khayr he's come with a lot of good this person in the third category طيب. and the third category will gain the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this jihad that he's putting put himself through this jihad that he's putting it's indeed Allah jihad it is jihad this striving that he's going through to keep his heart firm upon focusing on the act of the salah that he is performing and it's only by going through this that you, a, you will be able to even consider reaching the fourth and fifth level. You have to go through this. If you're not doing this, then you're nowhere near the fourth and fifth level. Because as we know, for you to be able to gain that love, that leather, that sweetness in the prayer, you have to go through what? Difficulty. There is nothing that you can, uh, whether it be related to the salah or outside of the salah, there is nothing that you can gain the sweetness of, طيب, except with what? Hard work. You have to put in the blood, sweat and tears. In order for you to finally taste the sweetness of your success. And the sweetness of success is in the fourth and fifth level. Especially in the fifth level. And for you to reach that level, you have to go through the hardship of level three. طيب. And for you to reach level three, you need to reach level two. And for you to reach level two, you need to be at level one. And so we all start at level one. And it's up to us how how diligent we are, how um, how much we care about our, our akhirah, that we want to strive to climb up that ladder. To get to the second level and then the third level and then the fourth level and then inshallah bi-ibnillahi ta'ala the fifth level as for the fourth category طيب, then they are those who again fulfill what's what's done by the second level and what's done by the third level so they fulfill the obligations of the salah they fulfill the arkan the wajibat the sunan the shurud and everything and they are able to what they've now gone past this stage of fighting they don't need to no longer fight they don't have that a bit that need to fight now with the shaitan when they enter into the prayer their inward actions are what are all within line all within focus complete focus on the prayer that they are performing all they care about is the prayer all they care about is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this prayer that's all they care about and so nothing else is what the whole world has been shut off when they enter into the salah, the whole world has been shut off. And so the, all their focus is on is the perfection of the salah, inwardly and outwardly. However, they lack one thing, which is hubbu salah. They lack the love of, the, they don't, they lack this love for the prayer. In terms of, they love the prayer, but they don't love it so much that they find enjoyment in the action that they perform. That enjoyment comes in the fifth level. That enjoyment, that, um, Worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though he's in front of you as though that you are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you have essentially put your heart in between the hands or the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira upon clarity complete clarity and this is the, the highest martaba of al-ihsan and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara that you worship Allah as though you see him but you know you can't see him but you know that he can also that he can see you and you also know that he can see you تعبد الله على وجه المراقبة وعلى وجه المشاهدة طيب this is how you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the fifth level these are those who will find the sweetness in the prayer and these are those who like the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa this is the level and of course the messenger of Allah is far greater than that far greater than this level because he alayhi salatu wa salam his serenity was in the the prayer ya bilal whenever he would find something uh, uh, harming him or affecting him he would command Bilal to make the 
Adhan, arihna, arihna ya Bilal. Give us rest, O Bilal, i.e. with the Adhan so we can pray the Salah. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned in the famous hadith of the Prophet, in the, in the famous hadith uh, reported by uh, reported by Imam Ahmad fi Musnadi, he says alayhi wa sallam, hubba ilayya dunyakum, right? Hubba ilayya dunyakum, aw min dunyakum, al-tibu wa nisa. From your world, i.e. from this world, what has been made beloved to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the uh, perfume and women وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَةِ And the apple of my eye has been placed in the salah And so the apple of the Prophet Sallallahu eye The most beloved thing to the Prophet Sallallahu That which when the Prophet Sallallahu Would look at it I.e. the salah He would become what? Serene He would become at rest How many of us have this feeling with the salah? How many of us have this feeling with the prayer? Very rarely do you find somebody Who has this genuine feeling of uh, Actual uh, wishing for the timing for the salah to come Yearning for the prayer to come Because the Prophet Sallam had internalized the reality Of what this prayer is It is liqa'un ma'allah subhanahu wa ta'ala duna tarjuman It is the essential Essentially it is you meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With no translator between you and him But in just in this case it's just you speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And there will come a time Where this will also manifest itself in reality where it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will speak to you and you will speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reply to him بدون ترجمان of course عند عرصات يوم القيامة in the day of judgment نسأل الله أن يتغمدنا في رحمته وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to envelop us with his mercy تباركت أسماءه ونجلت صفاته and so these individuals who are at the fifth level أولئك هم المؤمنون الخاشعون they are those who will be successful قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون they have come with the صفة of Al-Khushur And this type يعني, This category It is the peak It is the epitome It is the peak طيب, The one who reaches this category And is from this category He will يعني, reach that level of the uh, Of the Rabbaniyun uh, Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Has taken as his awliya Alayna awliya Allah La khawfun alayhim wa lahum Yahzanun These people who see the prayer As the comfort of this life These people who see the prayer to be their only solace in this life. That's all. Nothing else in this life affects them. What affects them positively, what uh, they live for in this life is the salah. Is to have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nas'Allah tabaraka ta'ala an yaj'alana minhum. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us like them. Because indeed, we are drowning. Drowning in the lower levels. Level 1, level 2. Maybe level 2. We're hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach level 3. Whereas those من السابقين الأولين من السلف الصالح من الله تعالى They were striving against one another Striving against one another In who can reach the fifth level Who can reach that fifth category Who can be at that highest level Who can be the one who finds that solid, solace in his prayer The one who uh, becomes rest when he hears the adhan The one who becomes happy, joyous That the time has come for him to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is something that we need to contemplate over And that we need to try and fix ourselves Everybody knows that we all have an opportunity to change Alhamdulillah Ramadan is here Ramadan is here and this is the opportunity It's coming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these mawasim Gives us these seasons For a reason And that is for the, for the, for the, for the Muslim For the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For him to reflect For him to reflect over the state that he is in Number one The sins that he's committed and that he uh, affirms these sins He accepts that he's performed these sins And that's the first step to change That you accept what you're doing is wrong And you accept your mistakes And you re- recognize them Because you can't change a mistake that you don't recognize even exists And so the first step to change is what? Is to recognize that it's a mistake And this is the best time to recognize it The time where the devils are locked up A time full of barakah And especially during a time where uh, and During the, the era we're living in right now a Ramadan where you're going to be at home for most of the of the month you're going to be at home so there is no excuse excuse you can't say I was working there was fitting at work there was the, all of these trials and tribulations that we have at work in the workplace they're gone you're at home you're among your family and so this is the great opportunity for a person to reflect over uh, what he's committed over the last few years over the last years reflect over his state of the prayer is he yearning for Tarawih is he yearning for Salat Al-Qiyam is he yearning to perfect his, his prayers, his obligatory prayers, his tunan prayers, and all of these things? How is his relationship with the Quran? How is his relationship with the Quran? Of course, the Quran is the, is the words which you recite during the prayer. 
when you hear an imam reciting long salawat do you feel joyous or do you feel like uh when is he going to finish طيب? you find people making memes out of that showing us the real state that we are in the the state the the, the, the dire the straits that we are in that people what they make memes about imams reciting salah for a long period if a person had love for the prayer he would what he would enjoy that the imam is reciting out loud and, and reciting for a long period and that if he was to shorten the prayer people would complain طيب? we should be on the opposite we should be making memes about those who shorten the prayer not not lengthening the the prayer however we are what we have been uh, يعني, afflicted with the disease that the Messenger of Allah called Al-Wahn. The Messenger of Allah called this a disease that will affect the, end, the last of his Ummah, Al-Wahn. Which is uh, that we will be a huge in number. But we will be like what? The foam of the sea. Why? What's caused this? Hubbu dunya wa karahiyat al Love of this world and dislike of death. The one who reaches the fifth category, he doesn't fear death. For him, death is what? It's just a gateway for him to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A gateway he has to pass in order to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A reality that he has to pass through in order to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Him, this world is nothing to him. dunya, this world, it does not equal to him anything. It is not worth anything to him. Zuhrufaha, wazinataha, all of it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to him. Because the apple of his eye is the salah. And he doesn't... Uh, hope in anything except what? Liqa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And so if you were to take this individual And you were to put him in jail He's happy Because he can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And if you kill him He's what? He's hoping to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And so he's happy with that His jannah is in his heart And his jannah has been put in the In the salah If somebody realizes this And reaches this level Then it will be An amazing achievement Let's Allah tabarak wa ta'ala And ij'alana minhum and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to reach the month of Ramadan and benefit from the month of Ramadan such that we come out from the month of Ramadan with a better relationship with our salah than we ever had before. Hada wallahu ala we come to the end of this lesson. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.